My name is David Skelton, I'm the Deputy Director of Policy Exchange and today we're publishing a report looking at whether there's a case for equal marriage. Since David Cameron announced at the Conservative Party conference in 2011 that he supported equal marriage, there's been a strong debate about the issue. And our report is the first time we've really evaluated the pros and cons of the debate and looked at the international evidence to see whether there's a strong case for and also evaluated the arguments against. Um, we found in the report there is a strong case for marriage. Uh, marriage pr promotes commitment, fidelity is good for individuals and good for society. And there is also a strong case for the benefits of marriage to be extended to gay and lesbian people who may well benefit from the institution. Um, we also talk about the fact that many conservative values that come from marriage, such as commitment, fidelity, the family, will be of particular benefit to gay and lesbian people who suffer um, disproportionately from mental health issues, um, alcohol and drug ab abuse issues, and there is a large amount of perceived promiscuity and rising sexual health problems in the gay community, which an institution that values commitment and fidelity, such as marriage, could be a strong social institution to help tackle those key issues. We, we also looked at evidence from abroad. Uh, ten countries have already legalised equal marriage, including a num also a number of states in the USA have made equal marriage legal as well. We, we found that in each of those countries, uh, support for equal marriage actually increased after the legislation was brought into force. And we also looked at polling data from the UK to consider the, the argument that equal marriage is a a metropolitan elite, elite issue, it's something for the people of Soho rather than the people of blue collar areas. We, we found that was particularly untrue. The biggest support for equal marriage is actually in the northeast of England, in the West Midlands and in Yorkshire rather than in London. As part of the report we've also evaluated the importance of freedom of religion and we find that it's particularly important that no religious institution should be forced to hold a same-sex marriage against their will. That whether the Church of England, for example, holds a, a wedding of two people of the same sex should not be up to Parliament or the courts. That should be up for the Church of England and the Synod to decide. The, the other side of the freedom of religion point, though, is that those institutions that do want to hold same-sex marriage, such as the Quakers, the Liberal Jews and the Unitarians, should be allowed to do so. As part of the report, we, we also looked at whether civil partnerships should continue after equal marriage was introduced, and also whether those civil partnerships should be extended to heterosexuals. Our, our finding was that, on balance, civil partnerships should not continue after equal marriage is introduced, because providing an alternative institution to marriage could do more than anything else to weaken the institution. Our main conclusion from the report is that marriage is a strong and beneficial institution that should be extended to gay and lesbian people. We believe those benefits would be of real, a real benefit to society and the gay and lesbian people as a whole.